Good afternoon. It's Thursday, March 26th. Glad you're with us. And I hope that if you're participating live during this devotional, that you will post some of your own comments as we go through it. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day, so I thought I'd uh, come and join you while I'm sitting out on our front porch. I don't remember what year this happened, but I remember the day that it happened. It was the day after Neil O'Donnell literally threw away a Super Bowl victory for the Steelers. You remember that day? So the day after that, when everyone in Western Pennsylvania was depressed, I went on a retreat for pastors that was led by one of the professors at Pittsburgh Seminary. Um, during this retreat, one of the things he talked about was two ways for us to understand the God that we worship. He talked about the God of the temple and the God of the wilderness. Now to be clear, this isn't two separate gods we're talking about, it's the same God but two different ways to understand him, God of temple, God of wilderness. We need both understandings of who God is in order to have a full understanding of him, uh, but we're a lot more comfortable with one than we are with the other. So first is the God of the temple. The God of the temple is the God who was worshiped and served by the temple rituals and regulations back in the olden days, the the God that we continue to think about anytime we have rituals and traditions and routines through the way that we worship God. The God of the temple provides regularity and meaning for us to get through life from day to day. Um, this is the predictable, manageable God. This is the God who follows the rules. Uh, and the reliable, steady presence of the God of the temple can be very powerful in our lives, a stabilizing influence whenever we need it, uh, something that makes life livable because otherwise we won't know what's happening from one day to the next. Uh, also, over time, the God of the temple and the rituals and traditions that we have from the God of the temple can touch us at a very deep level. I can give you some examples of that if you want to call me or message me, and we can talk about that later. The second way to understand God is to understand him as the God of the wilderness. This is the God who led the Israelites for 40 years in the desert after they uh, left slavery in Egypt before he brought them into the promised land. This is a spirit who drove Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days after his baptism. The God of the wilderness is untamed unpredictable, and challenging. This is the God that you can't put in a box, the God that you can't fully understand. The God of the wilderness is the one who takes our day-to-day -day routines and turns them upside down. He is disruptive. He is uncomfortable. He takes what we think we know and understand and shows us we really don't know and understand as much as we think we do. But God does this for a very good reason. He does this in order to orient our lives, reorient our lives in a new direction. No matter how good our patterns and our traditions are, they need to be mixed up every now and then, otherwise they become stale and dull. Not only that, but any way of serving and understanding God is always going to be incomplete because there's more about who God is than we could ever understand from one perspective or understanding. The prophet Hosea talked about this God of the wilderness and how God brings us into the wilderness with him in order to help us understand him and draw us closer to him. Uh, in the second chapter, as Hosea referred to the people of God as a woman, speaking for God, he said, I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. We are certainly in the wilderness right now, aren't we? Uh, we are doing without things and having to not be around people that we have always depended on. We have no idea what's going on. Who would have thought a month ago that grocery store clerks and UPS drivers would be heroes on the front lines for our nation? This is a time of uncertainty, of unpredictability. This would be a lot easier to handle and get through if we knew what to expect and if we knew how long we're going to be living this way, but we don't. This is a time when the God of the wilderness is, to use Hosea's words, taking us and alluring us and speaking tenderly to us. So we have a choice. During this time of unpredictability, this time of upheaval, we can long for the God of the temple. 
We can resist any changes or turmoil that we face, and we can focus our energy on trying to get things back to the way they used to be. Let's get back to normal life. That's a choice we could make. Or we can recognize that the God of the wilderness is at work, that God is bringing new and surprising things into our lives, that whenever we're so busy having structure organized lives there's no way for him to break through but now as everything is coming apart there's ways for him to come to us in new ways this is an opportunity for us to take stock of our rearranged upside down lives and think what is it about life that really matters what is it for you during this time that you're discovering really matters i hope you put up some comments to let us know about that what can we learn from this time we're going through now so that whenever it is over in one way or another, we'll, be learning, we'll learn how to live our lives differently? How can we understand God? How can we understand life in a new and a different way? Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we long for the days when we know what is happening. But sometimes, Lord, we confess that those times can be drudgery. We can feel as though we're just going through a routine day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. But now, Lord, you have chosen to disrupt that routine in our lives and taken us into a completely new place that we really don't understand. Help us, Lord, to trust you, to trust that you are with us here in the wilderness and that you are at work. Help us to see what you are doing. Help us to learn new ways of being who we are, of loving you, of being members of this society and this community. Show us, Lord, what we can learn as you're speaking tenderly to us in this wilderness. Amen. As always, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Look forward to reading your comments. God bless.